today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make some sandwich bread. It's a big hit with my kids and the reason that I have decided that I make all of our sandwich bread is that the store-bought stuff is filled with so many preservatives that I've had issues with digesting it. My kids have had issues with digesting it. And I've done the research and said, well, preservatives are put into bread or other food items in an effort to halt bacterial breakdown. And digestion is a bacterial breakdown. So the same things that are protecting the food from spoiling are still protecting the food from being digested and being used by the body. So I decided to make it because I am a stay-at-home mom and I have the time and if I if I can do something that's going to make a healthier decision for my kids, then why, why wouldn't I do it? So we are going to make just a plain old white sandwich bread because kids can be picky and I have tried, I have burned through many bread recipes trying to find one that they liked for their uh, school lunches and we have a couple go-to's now that they'll actually eat and enjoy. So this is the big one that has been the most successful in getting the kids to eat it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you guys today. So I've got three cups of flour that I already scooped out of my container. I'm just put that in first and it uses a quarter cup of sugar which I know sugar but figure it was such a small amount it's okay you can substitute it with honey I just haven't done it myself yet because I'm usually in a rush um, and then you're also going to use a quarter cup of a neutral flavored oil now I have just canola oil because some of the other oils can be a little expensive so I've chosen one that is a little more fo affordable for myself and it's just a quarter cup of that now we're going to put in two and a half teaspoons of salt. Now I'm using Himalayan pink salt. And this recipe also calls for one and a half tablespoons of instant yeast. Now I buy mine at Costco, which is in a great big freeze dried uh, vacuum sealed package. And obviously I can't go through that much yeast all at once, so snap top in the fridge. tablespoon and I happen to have a half tablespoon measuring cup but if you don't have one just a tablespoon is the same as three teaspoons so if you can you can just do one tablespoon plus a teaspoon and a half okay We've got all that stuff and now we're gonna take two and three quarter cups of very warm water we're gonna pour that in on top of everything else. Now, I prefer to just whisk it by hand instead of trying to stir it with anything else. And it just breaks up all those clumps until you get it all nice and smooth consistency. Okay, so this is just to show you kind of what consistency it's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of like a thick pancake batter. So that's all mixed up and now we're going to cover it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, so while my bread batter is resting, I thought I'd come out here and see what my darling dear David is doing out here. He's working in the garden for me. Alright, what are you doing my love? We are swapping out old drip line for new drip line. Yay! <laughs> Where you go to Home Depot, spend more than you wanted, and still have to go back for more parts. Always fine. So it's, uh, it's coming along, putting in new 5.8 drip line. Uh, last year, Amanda had all these garden spots that she actually had to hand water anyway. So this year I'm trying. It's kind of an annual little game we play of let's put in drips and then have to hand water anyway. Uh, so. <laughs> We're going to try once again to put the drips in the right spot. And it's nice and windy out, so Caleb and Audrey were out for a while helping, and then they ran off to the 
warm comfy abandon the house. abandon ship yes. go inside exactly but no it's great it's going well it's actually going a lot faster than i thought so what better way to spend a sunday afternoon than in the sun enjoying the garden i get it i get it sun day <laughs> i'm sure that's a joke that's never been made before yeah so actually this is kind of cool we have three uh different little uh watering stations now uh, last year one of the I think part of the reason we didn't get enough coverage because we didn't have enough water flow. Uh, it was trying to overload two, two stations, so splitting off to three, and we'll see how that works. And uh, it's, <laughs> we started off with a one station timer, went to a two station, and now I'm using the one and the two. So that's kind of the way it's working. And, and, and we had this, oh, well, kind of this, kind of like crossing over the garden. Like so, and it came down and then went up the other side and in. And finally I said to heck with it, let's just dig. So I dug under and had it come up the other side. So we got this thing going under, it's coming up over there. And then I'll figure out what of those old sprinkle ends we actually need. And actually we pulled a couple carrots and we were eating carrots and radishes. And uh, I'm looking forward to dinner tonight because Amanda's gonna cook up some radishes. Yeah, I'm actually gonna roast some radishes tonight. So here, this is how bad it is. This is what happens when you don't come out and pick your radishes when they're ready. They get to be that big. This is actually supposed to be a French breakfast radish. And, you know, so now it's a dinner radish because <laughs> they are all nice and big. So I'm going to be working on pulling out a bunch of these and getting them ready for dinner. Okay, so now that our batter, I guess more than dough, has sat and rested for a little over 10 minutes, uh, it is all nice and bubbly and it's ready to be mixed with the rest of the flour so I have three more cups of flour that we're gonna put in here we're gonna engage the mixer start on a low speed and I'm just gonna pour it directly from this bowl three cups of flour Stop it there. So I'm going to pour this dough out onto my cutting board here. Now, I don't know if this happens with other people's mixers, but mine does have issues where I will have just these clumps that it's just, it's hard dough, it's not mixing in. So I'll actually just pull that off and discard it because otherwise you just get these little dense lumps in your loaf. And if it's a sandwich bread, you really want it to be kind of uniformly nice and smooth all throughout. So I just look for any of these hard bits that feel really dense and I just pull them off because you know what? It's not gonna kill me to throw away a little bit now instead of having these hard lumps in the bread later. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna knead this just a little bit until it's nice and uniform. And it's not quite so tacky anymore. So we're just folding that flour into it. You don't wanna over knead it because you're gonna end up with a much tougher loaf of bread at the end if you do. All right, so now I'm going to lightly grease a large bowl with some cooking spray. I'm gonna just put this dough right in it. And it's gonna sit in there covered. And it's gonna rise for about an hour until it's doubled in size. So now we get to go entertain ourselves for an hour. The bread has risen. I did um, move the bowl so it kind of collapsed a little bit, but... Um, <laughs> But so what we're going to do is we're going to just carefully peel it out of the bowl now. And we're going to put it back onto our floured surface and knead it a little bit more. Okay. So now we're just going to knead it just a little bit. And we're going to shape this into loaves. So we're going to split it in half. 
Dip just, a, just the ends here on the flower. Again, you don't want to overhandle this or it's going to end up really dense. So now we're going to actually ri let it rise in our greased loaf pans. So just flop it in there. Shape our other loaf. Our other pan. Flop it in here. And we're going to let these rise until they are <coughs> at the height that we want them for our loaf of bread. Which is going to be just a little bit above the edge of the loaf pan. Alright, so these have finished rising. Now I know that they don't look very big, but they are going to continue rising in the heat in the oven. So just a little bit over the top of the loaf pan is all you really need. Because if it gets too tall, you're going to end up with a loaf that's very fluffy but won't fit in a sandwich bag, which is a problem I've faced before. So you wanna make sure it's a reasonable size. So now they're gonna go in the oven. I've preheated at 350 degrees and they're gonna go in for 30 to 32 minutes. I usually do 30 minutes, but depending on where you are or how hot or reliable your oven is, you may need a little more time. So 30 minutes is what works for me. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. Okay. <laughs> Take these beauties out. Oh my goodness. See, they did get taller. Those are really big. <sighs> okay, so these are now done. They're going to sit in the loaf pans for a couple of minutes before I take them out. Because if they sit in the in the pans the whole time to cool, they're gonna sweat. And then they'll have really, really soggy bottoms and it's really gross and it molds fast. So we wanna let them cool for just a couple minutes in the pan and then we're gonna dump them out. All right, so now this bread is ready to come out of the loaf pans and go on the cooling rack. What I usually do is because I have a very thin, small legged cooling rack, this being directly on the countertop is too close and the loaves as they cool will sweat on the counter and I end up with soggy bottom bread, which is no bueno. So I've got some cups that I turned upside down. So they're over here. So they're elevated off the countertop. And now they just, they should just pop right out really easily. If they do get stuck, then what you can do is just use a spatula. And I kind of tend to turn it the other way and then just kind of run it along the side to loosen it. And then tip it out. Put that on there. Now optional is if you want to get that nice soft glossy crust is that you can take some fresh butter and use a pastry brush and just brush it on like that and I've done it both ways it's still good you still have a nice soft spongy crust um, so it's just personal preference on what you want to do but that is generally how I make my sandwich bread and when these cool enough, we can cut into one maybe and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so this bread is finally cool enough that we can cut it. And now I cut things a little different. Uh, I don't use a bread knife on sandwich bread because the serrated edge is just too ragged and it ends up tearing the bread more than cutting it and it makes for a more crumbly sandwich. So I've discovered that just using a good sharp chef knife is the best tool and I actually turn it upside down because then we have a nice flat even surface to work with. So, and of course, you know, the heel is always the funkiest one. That just goes right down, you get a nice clean flat cut.
And you can cut your slices however thick you want. Let's see. I go for about the thickness that the grocery store will sell it at. And it's, I mean, you couldn't tell that that's homemade rather than store-bought. The main difference between this stuff and the stuff that you buy in the store is how fast it'll spoil because probably about a week and it will start molding. But between three kids, we go through two loaves in a week anyway. I have not personally tried freezing this, but I'm sure that you could. But we just go through it too fast for me to try it. Um, but if you don't go through two loaves a week, I would recommend trying it and you could let me know how that goes. But that's how we make this sandwich bread. It has really good texture. The kids love it. I haven't had any issues with them throwing away half a sandwich. Um, but you can pre-slice it if you want. And um, I haven't had any issues with pre-slicing and just storing it all together. I haven't had issues with it drying out. So you can either pre-slice it or slice it as you go. We've actually been using this recipe for the entirety of this past school year. I can't remember if we've gone much farther behind that, but it took me a while to find a recipe that the kids universally liked between the three of them. And so we found this one and it's working great, so I'm sticking with it. So another factor that you can consider if you're thinking about making your own bread is the cost. I mean, it costs me, I think, $15 maybe for like a 50 pound bag of white flour. And I mean, there's a bottle of oil lasts me so many batches. I mean, if you think about how little it is to make each loaf, it's a few cents per loaf instead of if you go to the store and if you get like a really nice bread, it's like $5 a loaf. But I thought, well, why would I do that if I can just do this at home for 50 cents or whatever the breakdown is? I will do the breakdown of the price or the cost per loaf and I can put it in an image here in the corner of the screen, like right there. <laughs> it's cheap, it's healthy, but your body can fully digest it. You don't have those preservatives bouncing around in your gut. And it's kind of just fun. It's very domestic. It feels like I have succeeded as a person and as a mother because I made bread and the house smells awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if this helps you find a good recipe that your kids will eat because they have decided to reject anything else you've tried, I really hope that this helped you. <laughs> so give it a try. Let me know what you think, what your kids think. This is your Urban Nerve of the Goat Herd telling you you can grow or bake wherever you're planted.